So um, you've seen the video and clearly we go from uh, an effective form of transport uh, at high speed to become a, a lethal weapon. Uh, the issue of extreme speed, hoon driving, uh, is one which the Police Commissioner has raised with us. Uh, we've given it due consideration to uh, elevating it by law uh, to include uh, a number of things, an increased uh, penalties, including imprisonment, uh, where there is uh, excessive speed uh, over 60 kilometres an hour uh, by, fifth, by sorry over 60 kilometres an hour limit uh, by 80 kilometres and under 60 uh, by 55 kilometres. Uh, that will introduce a massive uh, increase in penalty and importantly uh, on the spot removal of licence. Uh, it's taken some time to develop this law. Uh, there are circumstances we need to take into account, uh, including uh, making sure that we get it right. For example, uh, we have changed a lot of speeding laws over the last 10 years, and uh, we have uh, identified where weaknesses uh, have been uh, uh, exposed uh, as a result of trying to do something too quickly. Uh, an example uh, of why it's important that we get this right is to identify what are the factors to apply uh, where there's a speed limit identified but where there might be roadworks in progress uh, and of which there may be temporary uh, speed limits imposed. And to be absolutely clear about that, uh, this law will still apply uh, and the uh, elements of that of course include uh, that the person who's responsible is identified, that they were travelling at the speed that breaches the law, and that the prosecution must establish uh, that there has been clearly identified temporary restrictions and that there are workmen in place uh, at the time of the offence. So they're the so sorts of situation we need to be absolutely clear about before we impose this legislation, which of course could attract uh, a, the criminal sanction uh, and the imposition of uh, imprisonment. Uh, we're satisfied that the bill's now ready to go and I'll give notice in the Parliament this afternoon of the introduction of that bill tomorrow uh, and I would hope that it uh, receives the support uh, of the opposition and crossbenchers uh, and that it then uh, is able to be implemented as soon as possible. Uh, we need to not only protect uh, people uh, who might be passengers in vehicles of someone who's uh, uh, committing extreme speed in these circumstances, uh, but also those who might be innocent bystanders, whether they are pedestrians or in other vehicles, uh, and we know how dangerous this can be uh, in those circumstances. So uh, we look forward to the introduction of the bill uh, and, of course, hopefully its swift, swift passage uh, through the Parliament. Uh, I'm happy to now introduce uh, the Minister Tazia, who may have some further comment as the Minister for Police. Well, thank you, Attorney. These are tough new laws. If you drive at these extreme speeds, if you risk your own life and the lives of other motorists, you'll be booking yourself a one-way ticket to jail. That's our simple message today. We know that 43 lives have been lost on our roads this year. Every life lost on our roads is a complete tragedy. It's a tragedy not only for the victims' families of those involved, but also for the first responders. And what you've seen just there uh, is a classic and tragic reminder of how dangerous uh, this extreme speed can be. If you're driving at these extreme speeds, it is absolutely moronic. Uh, not only could you kill yourself, but also other road users as well. And that's why uh, this government makes no apologies about bringing in these tough new laws. I want to thank South Australia Police, thank the Police Commissioner uh, and the government for their support in bringing uh, this bill before the House uh, shortly. Uh, it's incumbent upon us to do all we can to make our roads as safe as possible. But if you drive at these extreme speeds, if you risk your own life and the lives of other road users, you'll be booking yourself a one-way ticket to jail. Uh, there will be no tolerance for this sort of thing. Uh, there's absolutely no reason uh, for driving at these speeds on our roads. As the attorney pointed out, uh, for 60 k's and less, over 55 k's are now over the limit, or over 60 k's for 80 k's over uh, and above. So these are absolutely extreme speeds. There's no excuse to be 
uh, driving at those extreme speeds. And of course, there are aggravated factors as well. So we look forward to seeing uh, these new laws uh, pass as soon as possible through the Parliament. And I'll now pass on to the Police Commissioner. Thank you, Minister. Uh, can I start off by saying that um, the video you saw just a moment ago highlights the inherent risks associated with travelling at ex extreme speeds on our roads. And it was just a few months ago that we had a spate of incidents that were very much like the ones we saw today that put this into sharp focus for us in terms of people's disregard for some of those road rules and the, the significant risks they're taking with their own lives, but not just that, the lives of other people who are using our roads. Uh, I uh, raised this with the attorney and I'm grateful that uh, this bill has been uh, produced and will be presented to Parliament today. I think this bill provides us a stronger mechanism to deal with these people who have no regard for their own safety or the safety of others. And I'm sure you can tell from the videos we've shown that there is zero capability to respond and react in the event that the circumstances on the road change in a very short amount of time if you're travelling at these speeds. Sadly, we have too many of these incidents and we imagine that we'll be able to use this legislation going through after it passes through the parliament. But it does give us another tool to remind people of their obligations on the road and to hold those people accountable for these incredibly dangerous activities that they're undertaking. I've made the, uh, the, the comparison between driving a vehicle at extreme speeds with shooting a, a gun down Rundle Mall, randomly shooting a firearm. Uh, the risks are the same and the consequences should be commensurate as well. So, this tougher legislation, I think, gives us the ability to hold those people to account. I'd also like to say that the video we showed today of that motorcycle rider filming his own crash, uh, we're able to use that because we have the permission of that motorcycle rider's wife. And I'd like people to remember that it's not just the person injured in the collision that has to deal with the consequences of this type of behaviour. It's their family members, it's the first responders, and it's the innocent witnesses who happen to observe this collision and respond in the first instance before emergency services arrive. The consequences from these types of behaviours have a de devastating impact right across the community and people who experience those things will live with it for the rest of their lives. So it's a timely reminder that we should be looking after ourselves and other people on the roads. Happy to take questions or pass back to the Attorney or the Minister. Can you shed any details on where and when this particular crash took place? Uh, not specifically, no, but uh, I think you can see that it was uh, in a, an area that had uh, higher level speed limits. So in this case, the um, the requirement would have been for the, the rider of that motorcycle to exceed the speed limit by more than 80 kilometres an hour, and that was clearly the case when you look at the speedo showing speeds in excess of 270 kilometres an hour. It's unconscionable that you would use a vehicle in that manner on our roads. How many times do police have to deal with incidents like this at such excessive speeds? Well, unfortunately, it's too frequent. Um, we've done some analysis that uh, we would imagine that this legislation, should it uh, pass through the parliament, would be used somewhere in the order of 12 to 15 times a year. But we're also hopeful that it acts as a deterrent and it makes people think twice about their behaviours before they engage in such stupid behaviour. What's the name of the new offence? Uh, I don't have that, sorry. Yeah. You can stay here and answer the hard questions. Okay. <laughs> uh, obviously it's extreme speed, so we have speed dangers, we have a number of different speeding offences. Uh, and uh, there are certain uh, defences in the Criminal Law Consolidation Act because once you go to imprisonment penalties and we we're in the Criminal Law Consolidation Act. These are cases that would ultimately be prosecuted uh, by the DPP, investigated by the police, they do all the clean up and all the prosecution uh, and then handed over to the DPP. So we're in the serious category of offences. Uh, and a defence, for example, that exists in criminal law allows for, uh, in the event that there's an emergency that somebody were to travel, uh, you might be travelling yourself to a uh, a hospital, that's a factor that can be taken into account. Uh, but let me say this, uh, even if you're travelling with somebody to a hospital at high speed because they're about to have a baby or they're in some serious health circumstance, if you're travelling at 200 kilometres an hour, you're more likely to kill them than actually get them to hospital safely. So currently can you not be jailed for speeding? I mean, what's, what's the difference? Yes, presently it's fines uh, with the removal of the vehicle. Uh, and, of course, the capacity to lose your licence and have your vehicle crushed. How did you arrive at the thresholds of 55 and 80 k's? What, why those limits? Look, largely we're trying to make it commensurate 
uh, with the potential and the risks that relate to you know, a manslaughter circumstance, which is what we're talking about here. Risk to life, injury to others, death of another party, whether they're sitting in the car next to you or whether they're a pedestrian on the road. Uh, this is the risk that is very severe and at high speed, evading police and uh, in those circumstances where particularly there's built up with, in an area where there's other vehicles or, or pedestrians. So uh, yes, our people obviously look at that quite comprehensively and this is another area of investigation that we do to try and ensure that the level of risk of the behaviour uh, and the danger and uh, damage that it can do is commensurate with the penalty. Uh, and that's something that we do whether it's shoplifting or murder. And which House of Parliament will it be introduced to this afternoon and then what is the process to have it passed? Notice goes today, it gets introduced tomorrow in the House of Assembly. Uh, if it passes that House, it goes straight to the Legislative Council. They make a decision. If they agree, uh, it comes back to us saying they agree and then it goes to the Governor. And what's the quickest time frame that could happen in? In a day, but that's usually in an extreme circumstance. Pardon the pun, but uh, look, we've post, we've, we've, for example, um, passed COVID laws where it's been urgently required uh, in such an emergency of a pandemic, uh, and uh, and in some circumstances that's been done in a day. Uh, usually, if there's been an imposition of a court uh, determination which might seriously affect a law, that's another circumstance where something would be done within a day. Uh, but it's not usual for lawmaking. We would expect both Houses of Parliament to uh, consider this matter uh, and the process for that is usually around a month uh, but, uh, and, and we've got sittings during June. So it could, it could be affected through June uh, if we have the support of the uh, opposition. And you says police would also have the ability to strip those of their licence on the spot. Can't they already do that? Not in some cases. In fact, that's some of the weaknesses of laws we've found where they're done in too much of a hurry, they forget to actually add that bit. The police have reminded us this is a really important tool. So just recently, in death by dangerous driving laws, we reformed that to enable them to do just that in relation to those laws. Uh, and in the course of that conversation, uh, clearly the police were exposed to some instances of home driving and evading uh, police arrest uh, and uh, have raised this further matter with us uh, while we were discussing the death by dangerous driving reforms. Uh, and so we've acted on it. Commissioner, it seems like this is something you've been calling for in the past. Are they tough enough? Uh, I'm, I'm quite impressed with the level that's been achieved here. Uh, as the attorney said, we have substantial penalties uh, and if there are elements of aggravation such as the use of drugs or a person who's disqualified and other factors, um, then it can be a five year penalty associated with this offence. Uh, one of the significant parts of this is the ability to prevent a person from driving from the time they're uh, arrested and we also take their vehicle at the same time. This is, this is important. It means that they can't go back out on the road the day after they've been arrested and bailed and potentially commit the same offences again. So th th these are strong laws that give us an ability to properly enforce them and we're hopeful that it does present a deterrent for those people who would think it's okay to do this sort of stupid thing. To the drivers we saw in this video, these new laws, would they go to jail? Well, that's a matter for the courts to determine, but the option is there now for a custodial sentence, and we'd certainly be liking um, uh, the courts to reflect community sentiment in that regard and deal with these people the way they should be dealt with. How do you describe some of the stuff that you just... It's abhorrent. Just to see, to see people thinking it's OK to travel on our roads in that manner, um, it's one thing that they put themselves at risk, but the, the potential harm to innocent people using our roads, it's you know, your people you care about. It's, it's my family, it's, it's everyone's families, it's our friends innocently using our roads, finding they're caught up in a situation that costs them their lives or puts them in hospital for months, if not with life-changing life injuries for forever. And we've seen too many cases of that. Um, and we want to see that ended as quickly as possible. Commissioner, why was it so important for police to have these changes in place? As the attorney highlighted, there was an element of frustration in terms of our ability to properly deal with these offenders. Um, police officers were faced with the dilemma of issuing an expiation notice, uh, which would then give them the ability to uh, issue a loss of licence, uh, which was not seen as a sufficient enough response to such dangerous activities. These people should be arrested and charged, they should be put before the courts, and they should suffer the consequences of their behaviours. So this gives us those tools. In the pandemic highlight, this type of offending, I think we saw 
sharp increase last year. Fewer people on the roads, but more people treating it like a race track. Well, unfortunately, I don't think the pandemic has had any sp specific impact on people's uh, uh, road user behaviour. Inherently, people do the right thing. Uh, we did see an incident, a spate of these uh, particular types of offences, which I think brought them into sharper focus. It created that public discussion. It gave us the, op the ability to take a package to the attorney, and the attorney has responded to that. Can I ask you some questions on COVID? <laughs> yeah. COVID, yes. Yeah, what was the latest situation with the rivals from Victoria? So at this point in time, uh, at 8.35 last night, I signed a direction that required anyone who has arrived in South Australia who has been to one of the high-risk locations uh, that they must uh, get a test and quarantine. Uh, those people who were intending to travel into South Australia who have been at one of the high-risk locations at the specific times are prohibited from entry. Uh, there are some exemptions to that, but that's the general rule that's being applied to people from Victoria at this point in time. I understand Professor Spurrier is currently in an AHPPC meeting and they'll obviously be talking about the Victorian situation and I'll be having further conversations with her and her team later on this afternoon and see what impact that has. But I, I couldn't forecast at this point what that might be. Do you expect our board to remain open to this year? I, I, can't, I can't forecast that. We'll wait and see what the health advice is coming out of the AHPPC meeting. Are you preparing to increase staff um, at airport checkpoints? Uh, we have the ability to scale up our checking processes at the airport and also on our road borders if need be. Uh, at this point in time, uh, we're not taking any specific steps to do that. Uh, the, the level of risk associated with those people who have been in those high risk locations is assessed as quite low. So we have a midpoint level response at the airport which will greet those people if they've been in those locations and provide them the specific advice they require to comply with our directions. Will there be a review into our hotel quarantine system in light of this leak? Oh, SAE Health have been undertaking that review and my understanding is they've made a commitment to make that uh, the outcomes of that review um, available uh, so people understand exactly what's occurred. Um, so South Australia Police have assisted with, with that review in terms of the security arrangements around that but this is a report that's being prepared by SA Health and we'll continue to work with SA Health to make sure our Medi hotels are as safe as possible given the situation we're dealing with, with returning Australians and other people who have uh, the right to come into Australia making sure they can be processed as safely as possible and minimise that risk to the South Australian community. Um, Commissioner, can I ask on a separate matter? Um, a lot of us saw vision of that brawl at the uh, junior girls footy game on Sunday night. What's your reaction to that and do you have an update on, on where the investigation is at? I don't have an update on the investigation but it's, it's always been my view that uh, that sort of behaviour uh, shouldn't be protected by um, the the perception that it's okay if it, if, it, if, it, if it occurs in a sporting activity or on a field of play. Uh, assault is assault, it's unacceptable and when you think about encouraging young people to become involved in sporting activities as officials and umpires, uh, this clearly doesn't provide that level of encouragement. Um, there is no room for that sort of behaviour and uh, we'd like to hold people to account for that. Any last questions? This video that you've shown, is this um, like an advertisement for the new laws? Is it going to be like played on the telly or just for us to no, we uh, will be pushing this particular video out through uh, different platforms so people can get a first-hand um, opportunity to experience that, that graphic nature of that last moment before the crash. And I, I noticed your reactions when you saw it too. It makes you stop and think. It's not just about that motorcycle rider. Uh, as, as tragic as it is for him, he made bad decisions and he's paying the, the, the price for that. But it's all those other people who are affected by it that we really think about. The, the, the innocent civilians who are on the road at the same time who could just as easily have been involved in that collision, the owner of the vehicle that he collided into and the, the responders who attend and pick up the pieces and look after those people. Is it your most graphic yet given it's not a reenactment, these aren't actors? I, I think that's a really important point to remember that this is not a reenactment, these are not actors, this is real life video of someone making incredibly stupid decisions on our road and paying a very high price for that. And I once again would like to acknowledge uh, that motorcycle rider's uh, family for allowing us to use that video because I, I think it really sends a very strong message to the community that roads are not playgrounds, uh, they're not racetracks and we should treat them with the respect they deserve. Now you can't tell us much about that crash but was it last year yeah, I think it was this year, early this year. Can we ask you about a, a crash at One Tree Hill this morning? I think a woman has been charged. Yes. Um, there was a crash at One Tree Hill this morning. Uh, a woman with three children in the vehicle uh, left the road. 
Um, I can't elaborate on the details, but the woman has been arrested and charged uh, for dangerous driving. Uh, obviously, there's an ongoing investigation in relation to that. The children have been injured, but none of the injuries are life-threatening at this time. And how disappointing is that, given on such a, a dangerous road day? Well, I suppose uh, the obligation is for all of us to make sure that we adjust our driving to suit the conditions. Uh, you can't drive the same way every single day. Uh, the level of traffic, the, the weather conditions all play a factor and you need to be mindful of those when you're using the roads. So um, it, obviously it's an open investigation. I can't elaborate on the circumstances, but it's a timely reminder for people to drive to the conditions. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you.